So uh, as we always do, uh, let's first read a few verses together, and then we we'll discuss it uh, as deeply as we can. So we, the parsha is at chapter twenty-seven, uh, verse twenty. Only let's read just two or three psukim. Uh, who volunteered to read? Ross, would you read it? Right, I was getting the uh, getting to. You said twenty-seven twenty. Yeah. Okay, I've got to. That's going to be Tetsiva. Tetsiva, yeah. Very good, very good. I'll have that open shortly. Too many windows here. Okay, 2720. I'll rely on you to tell me when to stop. Yeah. And you shall command the children of Israel, and they shall take to you pure olive oil, crushed for lighting, to kindle the lamps continually. In the tent of meeting, outside the dividing curtain that is in front of the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall set it up before the Lord from evening to morning. It shall be an everlasting statute for their generations from the children of Israel. All right, that's it. Oh, well. So let's uh, focus on those marvelous uh, tupsukim. So first of all, observation, uh, it starts to say you. Uh, what do you mean? It's not the common language. Usually it says, you know, God told Moses, says to Israel, command. But what do you mean? You, you ordered. So the name of Moses is omitted. It's omitted throughout the parsha. This is the only parsha in the Torah that Moses' uh, name is uh, not, not showing. And miraculously, uh, it's a uh, uh, you we read it in a cycle of the year, it fall on, on, on this month, Adar, and he passed away on on the seven of Adar this month. So uh, so many, some uh, Midrashim make a connection. His name his name is omitted because of uh, he passed away on that uh, uh, on that month. But uh, it's not it's not the real reason. Uh, the real reason is because uh, the focus is on Aaron. Aaron is now the glory of Aaron. Aaron becomes the high priest. Moses is now second, or not 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 not. It's it's not in uh, in his. Uh, a uh, realm as all. He's a king of Israel, he's a prophet, whatever, he's a teacher, but he is not functioning as a priest usually. So the glory of the temple is moving from him to Aaron. So no wonder that uh, the, the whole Pasha is, uh, is about Aaron and Moses is kind of de degraded in honor, so to speak, on the surface. Now, um, uh, what what is the subject of the of the those two verses on uh, taking the oil and um, and uh, and uh, put it put it in 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 the menorah in a light in light and so that the uh, through the night, there will be a eternal, eternal light. Actually, this uh, the eternal light didn't wipe didn't uh, uh, it didn't wipe out. It didn't it didn't shut down. It continued burning through through the next day. Uh, so it was eternal. So one 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 of the seven 
candle there. It was it turned a little debate? Which one was it? It's not our t- task right now to, to discuss it. So I hear that this is a topic of uh, oil, bringing the oil and setting up the candle. Well, uh, what's, so, what's so important about it? We'll see. Now, Moses, and you should, you should command, you should command. That's a special language. It doesn't say you should say, you should teach, you should command. Command is the function of the king. And Moses uh, acted, he didn't, he didn't brag about it. Uh, nobody called him a king, but his power was uh, a king. And you should order as a king. That's the order for Hashem. You should order it to your glory. To your glory, as Rashi said, uh, as uh, your glory as a king. So from all the all the, from all the services in the temple, so many services, sacrificing, singing, hallelujah, incense, who, who knows what, it's a whole all day service. Uh, the the one that the that the one would make will bring out the glory of Moses as a king is this one to prepare uh, to prepare oil for the candlelight uh, the candlelight itself is not uh, lightened by him okay so what who who kindled the menorah it was the Aaron Aaron himself is also mentioned here in verse 2 uh Aaron and his son. It doesn't say Aaron a coin, Aaron the priest. Aaron is an individual. So both of them, so the, the, the candle light is the glory of both Aaron and the glory of Moses. As personal as as per, Moses is a as a king and Aaron is a high priest, but he is not functioning here. As a high priest, Aaron and his son is individual. Why is that? Because the halacha says that uh, actually everyone can kindle can kindle the menorah. There is a mitzvah to kindle to kindle the menorah to lighten the menorah in the temple. But I like all all the services in the temple. All the other services in the temple. Uh, only our own, our, only the priest can do it. Nobody can sacrifice. Nobody can put incense. Uh, nobody can sing their Hallelujah. Only the Levite and so on. Each 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 part of the service is 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 done by a particular person who is commanded to do it. Not 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 the exception. The menorah. The the they the, the put the fire. To put the fire on on the candlelight is incumbent on anyone who happens to be there. Suppose the Talmud says, suppose the menorah was out, out of the chamber, let's say in a courtyard, for instance, and time came to lighten the candle. Whoever was there, even Israelite, even even a Gentile, even everyone who was there. Close the menorah, I could kill it. Since the menorah was in the, in inside the temple, of course, only only the priest was there. So it happened because it because it was there, he did it. So so the Aaron did it not as a commandment, not as a commanded, not as a person who commanded, uh, but not, not as a priest. He didn't do it as a priest with command, but as a person. So the glory, 
the glory of Aaron as a person, not as a priest, is by the candlelight. And the glory of Moses as a king is the candlelight. Or oh, oh, wait a minute. So now we see the power of it. Uh, so from all the services of the temple, uh, God picked up this one. This one is for you, Moses, to your glory as a king forever. For the generation, Rashi says, they remember you through that, through that oil, and Aaron is a, putting out the light. By the way, and it was done... Now, the question is, before we indulge into more detail here, uh, let's just put, put it in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in connection to the, to the, ser to the service, in, to frame it. When, what, what time of the day was it done? That's very important. Uh, the, uh, there were two steps. Uh, to to uh, lighten the candle, uh, to put the fire. First of all, it the if the priest had to had to to put the oil in the candle in in the in the in the in the uh, in the container there. How you call it in English? Uh, the one who keep the, the uh, nail, nail candle was not our our candle. It was oil. Uh, in in, uh, in in inside the gold gold cup and and there was a wig and the light came out burned from the oil so there were two steps first of all one has to come in clean the cup from previous night Clean it good, good, good. Well, you have to clean it to, to the details of no, no remain will be from, from last night. Clean it. Hard work. They didn't have a, a, you don't you don't you won't hire a, a service to do it for you. You didn't have, the coin had to do it himself to clean it. And then to put oil in a measure, a lot of oil, had to burn all day long, actually mostly even day and night, let's say day, and in the night they did it again. So first of all, to, this per, first step is to put an oil in modesty. Yeah, you, I praise you, you clean it. Don't call for a service. You do it yourself. And then the second step was to put a fire on it. Now, when was it done? Uh, it was done to it was done in the temple to excite, the Talmud says, to excite the people. People love to see that. They flock to the temple early in the morning to see that happening. So they were so excited, the people, to see it. The question is why they were excited. We'll see in a minute. It was so they were so excited that the rabbi decided to split the to split the service into two parts. So the show will stretch over the entire morning. Offering. So they took the first step was five, and there were seven candles. Five were done in the morning when the sun, just the sun, was seen rising on the on the horizon in the eastern horizon. So the, at that point, they 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 put the oil, they cleaned the service. Five of them. Then they offer the, the sacrifice to remember to in remembrance of Isaac, the morning offering, which is today the, the Bishmonas uh, instead of that. 
the priest also prayed Shmuel Esrei, 18. They had also a prayer that was done parallel to the, to the offering. Uh, uh, we, we should know there is no, no meaning to the offering without a prayer. So the priest, uh, the prayer of what we have today, Amida, comes come from old, from, from, from the time they returned from Babylon, probably. They, they coined it. Anyhow, so let's go back to our topic. So there were five candles. Only, only, I mean, uh, uh, there were five uh, arranged and also lighten up with fire. Then the offering of, of, the, of the lamb to remind, to remind God, so to speak, or to remind us, rather, Isaac. And then the other two at the end. So the whole, it's like a sandwich. So the whole offering of, uh, the whole service of the offering in the morning was preceded and followed by the candles. Uh, I, I, I read here in, 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 uh, in a stone edition here, it says the lightning was done only in the evening. Uh, the Rambam argue with that. And I think we follow the Rambam. And the Rambam says, no, it was done also in the morning and in the evening. In, in, in the evening. It was done twice a day, which makes more sense. So the people were excited. They came, came to see uh, the light of the menorah. And it symbolized something for them to them receive what? What did they, what were they so excited? And the light and the, and the light spread from Menorah, not to lighten up God, God said, we see the light. The light of Menorah is the Torah spreading all over the world. Okay, so we got the point. We have now idea where it was done in, in frame of the service. And it was done by the priest, usually, because he was there, although anyone could, could lighten up the menorah, and certainly anyone can, could, uh, could actually clean it if he was there, but the priest was there. But here in our parsha, uh, we're not talking about the lighting of the king. God tell Moses as a king, that you should, they should, let's read it again, you should order, command Israel, they will take for you a pure oil, pure and clean oil that is uh, pressed, cut it, uh, to lighten. So, uh, so Moses took, he should, he should God tell, him, tell Moses, they will bring you, tell Israel as a king commandment, to, to bring you that oil, pure oil, so you can join Aaron, you go there in the morning, you should, you should put, maybe you should clean, maybe you should clean the, the, the cup, could be, but at least you put, your task is to put the oil that you bring with you into the cup, golden cup there, Amenorah, and Aaron will follow you, and so both of you uh, will, will take part in this glorious service of lighting up the menorah. Aaron, as individual, who happened to be high priest, and you as a king of Israel come to help him. So here is a priesthood and kingship, if you want, joining together. Fine. A lot of commentaries about it. Now that's that's what God meant. That was what God meant. He told him, "You should, king, you as a king of Israel should order." What would you expect for Moses to to do? First of all, what kind of what kind of oil is it? Shemen zait, olive oil. Why olive? So the Midrash says, interestingly. It, it's because of Noah. Uh, remember, he was in the ark, and he sent a dove, and the dove came back with olive leaf. 
and and uh, to show him that uh, yes, you can go out, everything is fine. And and of course the door presented Shechina, and Noach was in the ark. Ark the Noach ark is equivalent to the temple, okay? Because the Shechina was there. Noach uh, saw. Noach also saw the Sabbath. The eternal Sabbath, because nobody died, nobody, there was peace in in his uh, in his ark. So Noah saw the eternal eternal Sabbath, and he saw the beginning our Sabbath. So he he saw the whole history of you of, of mankind from the beginning to the end, uh, from the first Sabbath to the eternal Sabbath. Uh, so that's the that's the midrash connect uh, explain why only. But the pshat is uh, olive burn nice. Uh, olive oil, uh, pure oil is beautiful uh, fire for light. That's the simple explanation. I will take both. Both are all right. But how can you, and Rashi said, Rashi said, how can, the key is to understand what kind, how can, how much work you need to do to extract that pure oil, you know what? Tons and tons of oil of olives, because you need you take you take the olive. You you cannot uh, you cannot uh, uh, you, you don't put it don't crush don't crush it. You press gently on it, and the first drop that come out is pure. That's a drop you take for the menorah. Whatever come next. Yeah, you can use it for other things. But uh, for menorah, you take the first, the first pure oil drop that you take out. So how many, and, and how many, they calculated, how many olives you need to do to take in order to produce enough oil to burn a menorah, the seven cups all day long, and maybe all night long. Oh, it fortune. Cost a lot, and you need to a lot of work to do. A lot of work, and then you have to take a sieve and and do it again and take out all the. Even there is a little remnant of the of the olive itself. You know, you had to filter it out. So it's a lot of work, and uh, so of course he's a king of Israel. And he should order other people to do it. That's that's what God meant. And that's what to expect it from the king of Israel. Moses, well, that's what that not what Moses uh, uh, understood. Moses did it himself. He understood that you should order Israel as a king, you just give him an example and they will follow. That's the king of Israel. King of Israel is not, is not there to sit there and give orders and they all, wow, 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 wow. I am, I am, I am the, uh, how, how King Louis said, uh, the, France is me, yeah. No, no. Okay. He, 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 he sat down himself and 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 pressed on each olive by and extracted himself. How much time it took him, who knows? That's what he did. Now, to give you an example. So how how uh, so, so, uh, so think about it. Uh, he, uh, the commandment, let's say, the, let's see the, what, what he was doing. The commandment from the Torah is to light, to light the candle. The oil, the oil is not to prepare oil is not a commandment from the Torah, part of the mitzvah. The oil is only a preparation. You cannot. In order to in order to fulfill the mitzvah, you have to have oil. So the oil is a preparation. 
So it's a, it's a preparation for, for the mitzvah. I'll give you an example. The, uh, uh, the mitzvah is to sit in the, in, in the, tab, in the sukkah, in the, in the holiday of sukkah. And, but to build, to build the sukkah is a preparation. Or the mitzvah is to blow, to hear, to hear the blowing of the shofar and Rosh Hashanah. That's a mitzvah, to hear it. To blow it is, a, or to make the, to make the shofar is not a mitzvah, it's your preparation for the mitzvah. So here Moses is focused, is, Moses' task is to, not to do the mitzvah, the mitzvah itself is done by Aaron, he is the one who killed it. He is that, so to speak, renegade or, or going down in the hierarchy. And his, his task as a king of Israel is only to prepare the oil, which is a preparation for the mitzvah. But he go even further down. Not only he, he bring the, the oil, the, the preparation, the oil, he makes the oil. Which is farther and farther down on, on, on the level of, of, of the mitzvah. So Moses is, is, is satisfying himself, is revering, so much he revered the mitzvah that he is ready to go down to, to the lower level, even, even to prepare the preparation, third level down. It is a king of Israel, modesty. And, and that excited Israel, because the whole purpose was to excite Israel. Now the Midrash seek explain how it was excited Israel. You know what? Because it, the, it, the Sanhedrin knew about it. They knew that he has to bring oil. So they, they saw him sitting there and preparing the oil himself. Oh, they, they, they excited. They, they told each other, see, see what Moses is doing? He's sitting there and missing it. And so they came first, and the word of mouth spread to the princes of the Israel, the tribe, 12 tribe. Each, each prince ran, ran over with his uh, entourage to see Moses sitting there doing it. And when the people, the word came out of the camp, the whole camp, you see what Moses is doing there, sitting there all day long and missing, missing the, the oil. Wow, so that exciting. That's the, the origin of the excitement that, that was accompanied by this candle. Because when people later on came to the temple, they remember the story. And, and when they saw the candle, the candle they, they reminded them the story. Moses did it. Moses sat down and he prepared the oil for that. So, let's see, so what, uh, okay, um, the, well, we need to, of course, understand what the, the, the purpose of the of the light, of the, of the, what was so important uh, uh, about the light, the fire, and the light of the candle. But here, um, so Moses was. Com let's repeat it. Moses commanded. Instead of commanding, he gave a, he gave a, he gave a, a personal example. And he he sat down and he 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 pressed on the oil and he prepared it. And he, by this he excited the Sanhedrin and the princes and everybody around him. So the whole the whole nation of Israel actually was excited by this uh, endeavor. Uh, katit. I am reading the Inibu. They will take for you oil, pure oil, a katit is pressed. 
press the let's go be mentioned discuss what it means and and Rashi says that whatever God God told Moses whatever you do now it will sustain the temple it is so important it will sustain the temple first of all before I forget, Uh, uh, katit, modesty, uh, 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 modesty. Of course, Moses showed up, uh, exhibited modesty. And katit is as if he read, I not only I need to, not only I need to, to press on, on the oil, I press my own ego. I cut down my own ego. That's what the Midrash uh, derived from here. Moses understood, yes, to, cr- to crush, not to crush, to press or to subdue his own ego. And, and Moses was, uh, was uh, uh, most modest. The Torah says that one of the virtues, or the only virtue that Moses uh, attributed in the Torah, that he was a modest. Nobody, he said he was the modest of all people on earth. The most important person on earth was the most modest. So modesty, and he showed that modesty here. So it teaches us about prophecy. The Shekhinah will never dwell on a person who is not modest. A person will show up with seven wives and martial armies and conquer the world and cut off the head of the infidel is a false prophet. A person who, who come on TV and say, oh, yeah, I'm, at night I, I have a revelation, I saw this and this and this. And you know that uh, he, he lives in a palace. People, people pay him a lot of money for the TV shows. And he has seven Mercedes. And who knows many wives, openly and secretly. And he come on the TV, uh, he is, he's a good preacher. False. Modesty. I, I saw, I saw the greatest sages of Israel in, in, in In my previous generation, Israel, my mother took me to him, Chazonish, as a blessing. I had surgery, and she came to him at the pressing. And I thought, wow, we are going to Bnei Brak to see this sage. I, th- I thought he was surrounded by his disciple and, and uh, sitting, who was uh, Chazonish? He wrote so many books, and he's, uh, uh, he lived in a modest house. And, Surrounded by, by high rises. He was modest, still old house with his wife, and there was only one chamber entering, and he was sitting across the table, old man, simple clothes. I couldn't, I couldn't decipher it, I couldn't say the difference from him to any other person on the street. And I, I, I was 13, I said, God, I'm, this is Chazonish. Modesty. And, and let me just, we have time, so let me focus on that point. Why is modesty so important? Why the Shekhinah, why the Shekhinah run away from, from a modest person, from an arrogant person? Because, I, I'm quoting the Midrash, I'm following the, the, the Midrash. Beautiful Midrash. We are made by the image of God. It means there was a mirror and God saw himself in a mirror, so to speak. And he, he made, uh, saw so the image in the, God in a mirror 
and he made us on the other side of the mirror, like his image. Now, we, so we sit on, on, on one side of the, of the mirror, and God, so to speak, it's only metaphor, God sits on the other side of the mirror, and there's a mirror separating between us and him. Now, in order to see him, uh, in order to hear him, even to see him, when 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 a person, when we, let's say, when I, when I sit on 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 this side of the mirror, and in order to for me to see to hear from him, so to speak, uh, the 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 mirror should be transparent. If the mirror is not transparent, and I look at him. It, I know that he's on the other side, and I look at him. But what? When I look, but I look at the mirror. So what I see is my own image reflected to me from the mirror, and I think, "Wow, this is God." So then I scratch my head and I and I said, "Well, the voices that I heard, is it my own image speaking to me, or is it God's words speaking to me?" That's called the 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 the, the coin it, uh, the 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 judgment or the trial of the prophet. Every prophet, Jeremiah, Isaiah, has to always think: Is it my own word reflecting to me from that mirror? And I think that I, 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 I in that case I'm false. It's only my own image talking to me. Or is it the true God speaking to me? And there is such fine distinction between them. Who, who can tell? It's a very hard de decision. Is it my own beautiful idea that I wake up at night and I think, wow, I dream, I heard voices and I saw the future. Is it my own ego talking to me? Oh God, now the, the, the bigger my ego, the, 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 the heavier, or the stronger is this image of coming big, back to me from my ego, from the mirror. If I have a big ego, I will see but it's only me, only me coming back to me. But if my ego is, is, is zero, there is nothing reflecting back to me from, from the mirror, then I see God. Okay, I repeat it. If I, if my ego is is cut, shrunk, uh, uh, crushed, and I'm I'm very simple man, and I, I really have no no self interest. In it. It's only it's not nothing in my glory. And 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 I'm and I'm completely submitted to God, and I'm, I'm no, without ego, no self interest. Then I'm then then the the image that reflected for me from the, to me back from the mirror is very also very small, because if what is reflecting it in, uh, to me back is my ego, my own ego. If my own ego is 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 thin, then I see God. Here it is. It come from here. So it come. So Moses is 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 a, is a, is a true prophet because. He had no self-interest. He had no self-agenda. He didn't want to have seven wives, and he didn't want to sit in a palace with seven Mercedes. Okay? And he didn't want anyone to clap a hand at him. And that's the king of Israel. So he, he, so he was so, is it, katit, crushed, he was, uh, and Moses learned it on himself. I should be like that, like the oil, in order to Shekhinah to dwell on me, so to speak. And he didn't say it because he was like that, that the Shekhinah descended on him. That was it, the only prophet that saw God through the mirror. That's the language of the Midrash. 
Moses, all the other prophets had some trouble. Part of what they saw is really the only ego talking to them. Moses was the only one who saw completely through the transparent mirror to the other side. No other prophet ever followed that, came to that level. Okay, but he didn't, I didn't ask, he didn't call for to, to clap a hand or to praise him. His name is even omitted. His name is even omitted in the parsha, in modesty. All that is glory for Moses. His name is not even mentioned in the talk, in, in the previous parsha. Everything is our own, our own, our own. That's Moses, the king of Israel. That's a true prophet. No other prophet in the universe can claim such modesty. Okay. So we talk about modesty. And they talk about, yeah, let's go back to this wondrous word, katit, a crush. God is, God is telling him, you know, this, um, what, what you're doing is going to sustain the temple. Well, well let me think of some, oh, what, what, what is he doing to sustain the temple? Uh, that's what Mitosh says. Now look at the word katit. The word katit is translated in pressed, okay? Uh, I don't know, those of you who know a little Hebrew, katit, pressed, is a kaf taf and yud taf. Katit is a kaf taf, yud taf. Now the numerical level is kaf taf, Kaf is 20, Taf is, four, taf is 400, so Kaf Taf is 400. The, the, the word Katit is actually split into two parts, Kaf Taf and New Taf. Kaf Taf is 20 and 400, and New, new Taf is 10 and 400. Two numbers are given here, uh, 20, uh, 420, and 410. Now hold your seat. 410 is exactly the exactly the number that the first temple stood. Since since uh, uh, Solomon built it until it was destroyed in Jeremiah, 410 years. Kaftet, 420 is a is a, is a number of years that the second temple stood from Ezra time until the Roman kindly destroyed it. They destroyed it because they didn't understand it. So 410 and for so it's a prophecy here. A prophecy, a rare prophecy. Usually we don't do it. Usually we don't learn gematria. And I personally, I'm running away from any calculation, gematria, messiah, and who knows what. It's not my cup of tea. But there are a few that Talmud pick up that we know there is some meaning in it. Here is one of them. God is telling to Moses, what you're doing will sustain the temple. Indeed, Katit is two temples, exactly by the year, prophecy. And so, you know, you, you stand in awe. What about the third temple? It doesn't mention here. Now, the commentary said maybe the third temple will come from heaven already. And there's a whole, I don't want to enter it, a whole argument about the, today's temple, third temple, if to build it or not. And all. Uh, let's, but certainly here is only two temples. So what you are doing 
with the modesty, with the oil, will will uh, sustain two two temples. Now, let's uh, go increase the magnification, so to speak, and dive a little bit deeper into the into the story here. What what is the uh, because you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And the deepest one was the Kabbalah, which I don't want to go into that. But the second common sense level would be what the Midrash said. What was Moses doing here? What is the importance of, of the candle and the light? What does it symbolize? Why is it so important? So we know the candle is the mitzvah. So the, uh, of course the mitzvah itself is only to turn to to lighten it. That's what Aaron would do. Put the fire on it. But by the way, the fire should should burn and, and light itself, right? For it kind of, uh, and to, the, the Midrash says, it will light also the fire in, in, the, in, the, in the heart of Israel who watch it, so to speak. You can see the, the, the Midrash see the connection between this and the fire that lighten up in the heart of the people of Israel who watch it. Fine, fine, I understand that's Midrash, but, but the, let's say, Let's focus on the on the commandment. The commandment is to fulfill the commandment. Aaron light the enkindle the 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 the, the, the fire. That's the mitzvah. What about the light that spread out of that? God doesn't need the light. So what is the light that is spread? The Midrash says that's the Torah. So the mitzvah bring out the Torah. Uh, you can say yourself, well, wait a minute, it's not logic. It's absolutely the upside down. I would understand logically that uh, I should first learn Torah, you yeah? know, sit in yeshiva, learn Torah, I don't know what to do. Then I do commandment. So the commandment will go out from the Torah. But here it says, no, you do, the, you do first the commandment, and from this the Torah come out. You do the mitzvah, and the, and the light will come out. Ner is mitzvah, ner, kind of, and the Torah, or the Torah is a light that's spread out to the world. The theoretical top, and why is it? That Judaism. You know, I go, I go, I'm a child, and I go to, I follow my father to the synagogue, and I'm holding the lula. And I, what he's doing, I'm doing too. I do the mitzvah. But then I grow up a little bit, and I ask myself, what am I doing? What is it to take the lula and lift it up and down and sign? You know, what, is it, what kind of service is it? What, what, what is the meaning of this mitzvah? Oh, you all, he tell, uh, my father would tell me, Go and pick up uh, the truck of, of Sukkot, Masechet uh, Sukkah, and learn it, and it will tell you what, what, what the whole service is all about. So the mitzvah bring me out the Torah, compel me to learn Torah. The Torah says, uh, give charity, whatever. Fine, I'll do mitzvah, but why? I learned I learned the Shekhinah, I learned about Torah, I learned about what, uh, this and this. I so, so the mitzvah that you do perform is a predisposition 
to to come and to learn Torah because then it has a meaning. I tell him, I thought I, uh, that's a principle uh, in a medical school. In medical school, the way we learn, the best way to learn medicine was not to sit at home and and and, and swallow textbook. I, the best way to learn medicine is to follow my professor in the morning round, okay? And I had to present him this case. This is a gentleman, 55 years old. He, he suffered from this and this and this and that. Oh, my professor say. So, so what, what is your differential diagnosis? What do you think about the... the, the per- what do you think about uh, what could be the what could be the, the, the diagnosis here? From the case, I, I I learn about medicine. Then, if I'm not prepared, I will stay there like stupid. I will not, not know what to do. But but very soon we learn that before before I know the next morning I'm going to present my case to my professor at the Urban, Urban University in Jerusalem there. And he will he will grill me. And I had to all night long I had to sit and learn minuta. I had to go over the over the person lab, the the the, the calcium and the, everything about the person with real life. And I had to explain to my professor what I'm thinking about that to draw and 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 in in in, in just one night, I can I can go over the entire book of this textbook and become meaningful. If I, had I not, because it, I, I swallow and I remember every 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 every, every theoretical possibility, I now it become meaningful. I have to remember it because he is going to ask me, and I need to ask to know what to answer him, and I need to tell why not this and why not this, and so that's the, that's mitzvah and Torah. You do a commandment and imagine yourself uh, the heavenly court ask you, now what do you think, uh, Tzvi? Uh, what, what are you doing? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? So you learn Torah. That's a meaningful way to learn Torah and not the other way around. So that's a uh, Mitzvah is a commandment that spread out Torah. What beautiful and a light and a window of the temple were were built in such a way. You know, they were the Talmud said they were narrow inside the window, and they were outside. The outside part was wide against all all logic because most. Most palaces are uh, the other way around. There is a little hole outside, and as it from the inside, it's wide because the light come in, and in the temple, the light came out. So that's why in the in the inside part was narrow, small, but it spread out. The window was open up, so the Torah, the all the Torah, were spread all over the world. Okay. Any question for me?